Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Heavy Coder, and today in this video I would like to talk to you about how to solve the diagonal difference algorithm problem on HackerRank.com using JavaScript. And first of all, let's go and take a look at the question. So the problem asks us to take the input of a square matrix and calculate the absolute difference of its two diagonals. So in this case, we have a 3x3 three three square matrix, and it's going to be come in in the form of three arrays of integers with each array representing a row of the matrix and our job is going to be coming up with a function that calculates the difference of the integers on its two diagonals so in this case the first diagonal is going to be 1, 5, and 9 which has a sum of 15 whereas the second diagonal is going to be 3 plus 5 plus 9 with a sum of 17 and its absolute difference is going to be 2. And obviously the input is not going to be the 3x3 three three square matrix throughout. It's going, there's, there are going to be some 4x4, four 5x5, four, five five, or 6x6 six six matrices. So it's not a good idea to hard code everything um, based on the assumption that everything we get is going to be 3x3. Three three. So with that said, my ambition is going to be coming up with a function that calculates the sum of its two different diagonals within one single for loop. Uh, and in my opinion, the difficulty lies in when you're calculating the second diagonal, because if we represent the integer of the second diagonal in forms of um, the square brackets, and you can see in this case, the first integer of the second diagonal is going to be array square bracket zero, square bracket two. And the second integer, however, is going to be array square bracket 1 and square bracket uh, 1. You can see that in this case, whereas the first square bracket is increasing by 1, the second square bracket is decreasing by 1. So whereas it's still possible to use mathematical expressions to link the two integers in the two different square brackets, However, my preferred method of solving this is to write a for loop that takes two different iterators. So with that said, let's go and take a look at how I solve this problem. So within the diagonal difference function, let's first declare a few variables. The first variable we're going to declare is going to capture the size of the square matrix. So let's first declare a constant variable called dim, and dim is going to equal to array square bracket zero dot length and what this line of code does is that it's going to calculate how many integers the first array is going to have and store it in a constant variable called dim you can write dim equals to array dot length and achieve the same result because we're dealing with a square matrix here and the second variable we're going to declare is going to be um, the sum of the first diagonal integers from left to right. So let's write let first diagonal sum and give it a initial value of zero. And by the same logic, we're also going to declare um, a variable called second diagonal diagonal sum and give it also a initial value of zero. And lastly, we're going to um, initialize a variable called sum. And what this variable does is that after we have calculated the first diagonal sum and the second diagonal sum, we're going to uh, calculate the absolute difference of the two and store them in this variable. So with that said, let's also give it an initial value of zero. And with all of the variables declared, we get to the meat and potato of this function, which is the for loop. And remember, just like we discussed, um, the complexity the complexity of this algorithm problems lies in how to mathematically represent the position of the integers from the second diagonal within a for loop. And instead of writing some very verbose code to solve this, I have decided to initialize two iterators for this for loop. And it looks something like this. So for let i equals to 0. So this i iterator is going to represent the row of the integers in the second diagonal. And 
j equals to dm minus 1. And this j iterator is going to represent the column of this integers from the second diagonal. And after we have declared these two iterators, let's specify when do we want the loop to stop. So we want the loop to stop when the i iterator, which is the row, is equal to the length of the square matrix, which is dm. And for the column or the j iterator, we want it to equal to zero because it's decreasing. So let's specify the loop to stop when it's zero. So essentially the loop is going to stop when the j iterator is equals to zero. And the last thing we're going to specify for this for loop is the uh, behavior of the iterators. So for the i variable or the row iterator, obviously we want it to increment by one with each iteration. And by the same logic, we want the column or the j iterator to decrease by one with each iteration. So that's the hardest part of writing this for loop. And inside of the for loop, the logic is very simple. The integers from the first diagonal is always going to be array square bracket i square bracket i. So the way the method of calculating the, the sum of the first diagonal integers is going to be first diagonal sum equal plus equal um, array square bracket i square bracket i. And by the same logic, the method of calculating the integers sum of the second diagonal is going to be second diagonal sum plus equal uh, array square bracket i and square bracket j. And after we have done that, the last thing to do, the next thing to do is to calculate the absolute difference of the two diagonals. So we're going to write sum equals to first diagonal sum minus second diagonal sum. And mind you, the question asks us to return the absolute difference of this value. And there's a probability that when we write this mathematical expression, the ending result is going to be a negative number. So in order to deal with that case, we need to write an if statement. So that in case the sum is a negative number, we need to return the value of sum times minus 1 to turn it into a positive number. So we're going to write if sum is greater than 0. If sum is greater than 0, we're going to return uh, sum by itself. However, if sum is less than 0, we need to write an else if statement to deal with that case. So else if sum less than 0. And last but not least, if the sum is calculated as 0, then we're just going to simply return 0. And that's essentially all the code we need to complete this function. Let's now try to submit the code and let's see what happens. I hope you found this video to be informative. If this is the first time that you're on this channel, me and Mary do a lot of JavaScript and Python programming on this channel. And we also do a lot of software and just technology related video in general. So if you like today's content, please click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And we will see all of you in next week's video. Bye bye. It's a perfect chance for me to share with you guys that it's possible for us to write for loops that deal with more than one iterators. And with that said, that's the gist of today's video. 